I'll start off by reading from this article so you can pull it up to, uh, and then we'll discuss it. That's all we'll do. I got it. Okay. Bismillah <laughs> al-Bahrain. Iran urges global resistance against illegal U.S. bullying. This article was put up uh, June 18th, and it looks like 558. Iran's top security official has blasted the U.S. for targeting the national identity and sovereignty of the world countries, calling for global resistance against Washington's illegal bullying. Secretary of Iran's Supreme National Security Council, Ali Shabakani, made the remarks in an address to the 10th International Meeting of High Representatives for Security Issues in the Russian city of Ufa on Tuesday. Is it going out? No, I was turning the sound up. Oh, okay. He described the U.S. under President Donald Trump as the most warmongering country in history, denouncing it for destabilizing the international security system through international, through unilateral, unilateralism and extraterritorial sanctions. If a wide range of countries decide to stand up to the illegal U.S. blackmail and bullying we can make the U.S. retreat and adopt a rational and responsible behavior in the international system, he added. Iran's top security official also complained that the U.S. has been using the monetary and banking system as well as international financial networks as a weapon for aggression against independent countries. No title other than economic terrorism suits the U.S. behavior, he said. Washington has not only been pursuing the policy of toppling governments and destabilizing states, but has also been slapping secondary sanction on all states based on its agenda of economic terror, the senior Iranian official added. Shamkani further called on independent countries to create multilateral mechanisms to break the U.S.'s dominance of the global monetary system. Referring to the U.S. blacklisting of Iran's Islamic Revolutionary Guard Corps, he emphasized that the elite force is part of Iranian armed forces and has a brilliant record in the fight against terror. On the contrary, he added, the U.S. Army and intelligence agencies has been the biggest sponsor of terrorist groups in recent decades. Back in April, the White House labeled Iran a state sponsor of terrorism and the R I R G C as a foreign terrorist organization, claiming that the elite force actively participates in finances and promotes terrorism as a tool of statecraft. Additionally, Sean Kani said the U.S. withdrawal from a 2015 multilateral nuclear deal and Europe's inaction paved the way for fading diplomacy and dialogue as solutions to security challenges. He said the most of the countries have supported Iran's wise behavior when it gave diplomacy a chance and waited one year in patience before suspending some of its commitments uh, to the nuclear deal. Okay. 
Does that strike anybody as uh, anything strange? This uh, talk. And if so, how? Well, well, let me give you a few. Go ahead. Well, no, definitely it's, it's, it's stating that um, certain things that you've talked about as as well, when did I talk about the when did I talk about the Iranian security apparatus? Was that last night exactly, or was it? Well, I, I can I it can't was last night. Last well, night. it was last night. Okay. I said those people, if they don't come around, they're going to have to answer to the Iranian security forces. That's what I said exactly last night. I also said, gave certain deadlines that they're going to have to answer what I was saying last night. That's why we're back here tonight. I said, they're going to have to answer this within one day or no longer than two days. They're going to have to answer. Or the sky's the limit. That's not what I said, the sky's the limit. I said what I said. When I read this this morning, it has 558, that means over there, they made this talk at around. They made it sometime in the morning or afternoon? 958. Huh? 958. Is that what it says? Yes, yeah, 958. Yours says 950. Mm -hmm. Okay. I thought mine said 5. It doesn't. Mine says 550. Wow. Okay. <laughs> now, his. We finished here at 11 o'clock last night, right? 11 o'clock here, it's already Tuesday morning over there. It's about 11 o'clock. The uh, Soviet Union is from above, uh, and Iran is from here. It's seven or eight hours different. Russia, let's say, is quite much part of Russia. It was already in the morning in, in Russia, in Ufa. Whatever I'm saying, this lecture by the Iranian security official either We coordinated the talk here in Nelson. Either we're coordinating this talk because he dealt, you got to look at the issues he dealt with. The national currency, da 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 da. He dealt with exactly what I was saying that you've got to deal with it right now. You don't have no time to waste. That means that they maybe had one or two hours to put this talk together. Or I had coordinated with them before. Or I, I'm lucky. It's luck. It's luck. Or it's clairvoyance. It's clairvoyance. Something has happened because they dealt with, they answered the exact question that I put forward last night, when you review this thing, you're going to see they, this right here answered. That's why I got up this morning and I just happened to be scrolling through and I read it. I said, what? Basically, I come to this conclusion. Open, Sean County Psychological Warfare. This is psychological warfare. No matter how anybody look at it, either, let's take a few scenarios. Either I coordinated this with them over there. But that means, if, they, if that happened, that means I'm doing pretty good. Uh, I'm going way up near the top on all of this, everything. Either I coordinated with them because I knew ahead of time they were going to have a security the 10th annual security talk over there. 
which I, my word as a brother and a gentleman, I had absolutely none, no idea that they was having this conference in Russia. Absolutely none. But let's say I did know, that means I coordinated it with them. And I said what I said so they would have to respond to what I was saying last night. Or, I'm lucky. I'm lucky. I just happened to bring these subjects up in this order, right? And they happened to answer the main points that I pulled out in a security conference. But the person that's answering it is the top security man, head of the NSA, right, in Iran, Sean Connery. That's what it says, who he is. And he outlined the exact program. That's why the first note that I put right here, Sean Connery, Psychological Warfare, take credit. I, I am taking credit, here's why. I could be lucky, I could have just been talking last night and brought those points out and they just happened to cover them. Forget the deadline and all of that stuff that I say. Forget my attitude and uh, that I had last night. Just forget about the, the attitude. The demand, I'm, I'm demanding this. You got so much time to do this. Just set that aside. Well, I'm lucky. I'm lucky. It has nothing to do with strategic management of the conditions of oppression. It has nothing to do with psychological warfare. I'm just lucky. I just happened to say that, and I happen, they just happened to be over there, and all of this luck. If you think it was luck, you have to see how consistent is this luck in here. How coincidental. What did we put in our, or one of the writings about that? Book of coincidence, book of circumstantial. You know, so call this coincidence. Right, it's circumstantial. It's just happening. Or, or 95 or 90 percent clairvoyance because the history of our, you know, like they sit there, they already hear what I'm saying. They already hear it. They got notes and they're adding up. But they got a fact sheet. How often is this nigga right? And they get worried. No, they're not getting worried. They've been worried. Now, I say I have 20% clairvoyance. Because if I had clairvoyance, I would be all knowing that, though this don't happen that way. I say 20% clairvoyance, but see, the white man don't know that it's 20%. He thinks it's 80 or 90% clairvoyance because he don't know when I hold back and when I go forward. All he knows is everything that I say, you can take it to the bank. That's why I want to mention, several months ago, I mentioned that one of the things of trying to misinform me is so I will misdesignate a misforecast. You know why he wanted me to make a misforecast? Because I always forecast, and his forecast is always against him. And it's always right. Now, you got to remember uh, about Iran. All the forecasts about Iran has been correct. Even they're not perfect 
they're not excellent, they're not, they are, right? they, they're, they're not doing too bad. Iran is not doing But you gotta remember, the look of everybody else. The B team, what's the what's they call the B team? That's in Yahoo, B team, that's in Yahoo. Bolton, somebody. And uh, the the Arab guy, the Saudi guy. Oh, the NBA? Yeah. That's the B team. That's what the we call the B team. Not the A team, the B team. And they are the B team because they have B team. Look at everything that's happened to Iran and Hezbollah over the decades. After the war in Iran, in Iraq, that ended in 1988, Iran has exploded in regional power. Everything is going its way. Everything. It's like now. All of this jumping up and down about Iran, Iran wins this whole thing hands down. The U.S. don't win nothing. Because if you look at uh, Rouhani, all of them say we don't want to have nothing to do with the war. The only thing they haven't said is that, okay, you forget, you keep your stuff. That, all that will come later. We don't care nothing about you. We're going about our business. You don't have no business in none of our stuff. If anything come up in this area, which they said basically that, anything, you did it. And you know who believes in everybody. The only ones, half of the U.S. press even know that Donald Trump is lying. Half of the people, you, when you look at the U.S. press, Uh, the Republicans is with God. The other ex-security people, all of them people, they say, yes, Iran did it, but they don't have no proof. And then they drop in there, Japan doesn't believe it. It's not only Japan don't believe it. Nobody believes it. Nobody believes it. The only one that just hellly knows was Britain. None of the people, especially Russia and China, they don't believe it. They don't believe it. They don't care what you say. We don't believe that. We don't believe it. There's no evidence to prove that. All of our sailors said that the flashes popped up. A boat going up there getting the land, a uh, water mine, hell of that, that must no mine. And they get it off way up there, and if it's unexploded, why they need it back? How the hell did they get it up there anyway, on the ship? How would they get a mine on a uh, cargo ship? Cargo ship? They had trench coats, hats pulled down, they slipped on that. And it blew up. How it blew up way down there, it's in, it's in the water line. The other people said, no, that bam, it's boy. Anyway, nobody believes it. But what about us? What I want everybody to understand is, and I'm not going to mention it much anymore, if you want to know why, if Mukhtar and Khadija call on my phone, if they bust me upside the head, it's because this practice is desperate. They, they got to get something. They got, look, they're desperate. Desperate. And they only tell the people involved, what are they white folks call it, need to know. Need no basis. basis. Yeah, need no basis. They don't tell all the Negroes about this or all this stuff. They just tell the Negro his, his little issue. That's what you do. That's, you don't need to know the other stuff. 
I'm telling you, the white man is panicked. He don't know where psychological guerrilla warfare begins. He don't know where psychological warfare ends. And he definitely don't know anything about our relationship with Iran. None. All he knows is the stuff that, uh, you know, the little Iranian guy used to be in. And some of the people, and I mentioned them before, they used to, for the last 10 years, when I'd go to Iran, they would keep me almost as a hostage out in the Northwest. I'd have no more time in Iran. And if I did happen to go to a program, they would zip me down there and zip me back. But I didn't mix with the people too much. And then after that, they just cut all, they just cut most of the stuff. And the others tell me, you don't have to put up with that. You let them alone. You let everybody do what they want to do. I said, I do it in America and I do it here. You if you stop people from doing something, they won't express themselves fully. You let them take it all the way to the bus stop. So now I'm bringing in stuff that I have acquired over a long period of time. I know who's who and how they operate. I know Iran, uh, Abdul Malik was supposed to be anti shia Hashem al was supposed to be pro shia supposed to be big time shia They were all on the same team. I know the doctor right down there, uh, I told a few Iranian stuff. I said, no, man, Abdul Malik was pro shia He said, oh, oh, no. He was supposed to even know Abdul Malik. It's OK. No big deal. No big deal. So I've always, I have my own mechanism. I have a thousand mechanisms to. We might be sitting here and I said, okay, does anybody want a free car? And the police took my car, I'll give you the paperwork, you can go down and pick up the car. That's all. If nobody wants it, that's one thing, but if they look to their right first, automatically, and they catch themselves, so oh, that's fine. Remember, I mentioned it years ago, the senior snitch, if there's talk going on, everybody, unless they retrain themselves, they give